Good morning, everybody. Before, um, before I introduce the next speaker, I really want to uh, send a shout out to the organizer and the people that work behind the scene. Doesn't matter if it's a big event or a small event, you know, there's a, a lot of work that goes behind them. So please join me in giving them a round of applause. Thank you very much. And if you walk by them, just give them a, a high five. They really, they really work hard to, uh, to keep this in motion. So our next speaker is uh, Ryan Stanton from Tennessee um, Department of uh, uh, Conservation. And Ryan is going to present uh, what is Tennessee's state view on electric vehicle and the future of electrification. So as much as we are defensive these days and we're not exactly sure where this electric story is going to end up, the reality is that the long-term decarbonization is only going to happen through electrification. So please welcome Ryan Stanton. Okay, good morning. Can everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up? Okay. Uh, shout out to all the students out there. Glad you guys came. Should be a great day. And uh, I hope everybody is uh, recovering well from, from last night. It sounds like y'all had a great, a great time at, at ACME. So if you need, the coffee is right over there. Just want to make sure you know where, know where that is. So today, or this morning, I'm going to cover uh, a process and a, 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 something we've been working on. Uh, not just, I'm with the state of Tennessee, but a, a vast uh, array of stakeholders across the state of Tennessee have been working on a plan to promote electric vehicles in Tennessee. So you may have a couple of questions why we're doing that, you know, what the plan is, and I'm going to get into that in this presentation. So to begin with, I always like to start with, I, like, I love history, so I like to start with, with historical pictures. If you've, if you've been to a few conferences uh, where they talk about the future of mobility, you've probably seen you know, New York, Fifth Avenue, where it's, it's horses and carriages, and then five years later, it's, it's automotive. Uh, I actually like to I, I like to start with one that's a little bit closer to home, and this image is actually uh, a 1930s advertisement from the Tennessee Valley Authority. So in the in the 30s, as you recall, there were a bunch of public works projects underway, and the Tennessee Valley Authority, the creation of of the Tennessee Valley Authority, was one of those. And what I want to point out in this in this picture, I, I love this. <clears throat> so take you take you back to the 1930s. This is a, an electric hot water heater. It's an electric fridge, an electric mixer, an electric stove, and I think that's an electric freezer there. And they might even have air conditioning here. I don't know. But the point is, in this photo, at the time, remember, remember the context, there were a lot of people in the Tennessee Valley that didn't have electricity yet. So this, was, this, this kitchen here was considered the lap of luxury with electric hot water and a stove, no wood burning, no wood burning stove, anything. To the point with, initially this was taken as very, well, you know, it's only for, for certain people that can afford it. It's very expensive. And they were very expensive. But as we all know, manufacturing caught up, costs came down, and now these are in the kitchen or the homes of every home in the United States. So we kind of hear a similar narrative around electric vehicles today, don't we? These three cars up here average about an eighty-five to ninety thousand dollar starting price. Very expensive. It's it's for for wealthy people, but we've we've seen a pretty significant change over the last two years with the introduction of long-range, lower-cost electric vehicles. Oops. Go back. So up here we have the Nissan Leaf. Uh, earlier this year they released the 226 mile range Nissan Leaf for under 35,000. Of course we all know this car. And then Volkswagen will be introducing their crossover in 2022 over 200 miles of range for about the price of a Volkswagen Golf. So across the state we, we started looking at this and, and thinking, you know, what does this mean for Tennessee? What does this mean for Tennesseans? And so we looked at a convergence of trends with both longer range electric vehicles, lower prices, uh, you know, the growing 
consumer awareness and adoption was increasing. We're not, we're not California, and, and we're not going to be, but we saw just an uptick of interest across the state. And then there was a, a significant amount of funding going towards both manufacturing capacity as well as charging infrastructure. Uh, our office is the uh, is, is doling out the money for the Volkswagen Environmental Mitigation Trust. So we had funding that can go towards electric vehicles. And then, of course, there's interest, obviously, from the OEMs and the suppliers and universities. So we pulled together a group, and it was the timing couldn't have been better. Because at the time, this is, this is what electric vehicle sales looked like in Tennessee. From about 2010, right there, where they start, to about 2017. So we're kind of, you know, a pretty small percentage, you know, 0.4% of vehicles sold were electric on average throughout that time period. But then something happened. So in late 2017 and, and 2018, we just saw a huge spike. This is right around the time we're starting to, to, to undertake this initiative. Can anybody guess why that is? If you said Tesla Model 3, you'd be correct. That is when the Tesla Model 3 began shipping in mass quantities to Tennessee. This is just Tennessee. This is not any other state. So this kind of spurred us and, and you know, uh, really bolstered our, our, our view that there was a, a significant change coming and that we ought to get ahead of it. So we pulled together a group of stakeholders, and throughout 2018, we spent time going through and kind of you know, figuring out a shared vision for, for Tennessee, including you know, it's not just government, but it's OEMs and suppliers and citizens. And we developed a roadmap, which included a, a goal, which I'll get to in a second here. But we released the roadmap at the beginning of this year in January. So what is, what is the roadmap and what is Drive Electric Tennessee, the organization behind this roadmap? Well, it's a consortium of stakeholders that have any kind of interest or stake in the electric vehicle industry or the automotive industry. The goal is 200,000 electric vehicles registered in the state of Tennessee by 2028, starting from 5,000 in 2017. So a 40-fold increase is what we're looking for over the next 10 years. And the reasons behind it are we do believe it will improve the lives of Tennesseans. And I'll get into that. So the group of stakeholders, this represents just a few of them. We had over 40 stakeholders involved in that year-long process, uh, including government agencies, electric utilities, uh, auto, auto suppliers and manufacturers like Nissan and Bridgestone, as well as some nonprofit industry organizations. So... This is just to kind of give you an idea of where we're starting from. When you think of Tennessee, you're probably not going to think of an electric vehicle capital. So here's where we're, here's where we're starting in 2017. We're, we're below North Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, and Florida. But here's where we want to go. So as we see, this would position us to be one of, if not the largest adopter of electric vehicles in the state of Tennessee. And this blue bar here you see, this is what we believe through this plan that I'm going to go through that we can achieve incrementally over having done nothing at all. But first, why, why do we care about electric vehicles? What's, what's the benefit? First of all, they are less expensive to operate. So compared to the cost of fueling and, and gasoline, they're about 65% less expensive to drive on, on a daily, weekly basis to fuel using electricity at your home or your workplace. They're also, the, as we know, the maintenance is significantly different and significantly less. So think no oil changes, very few brake pads, and my favorite, no timing belt changes. Those darn surprise changes <laughs> at 100,000 miles. Next, for us regionally and, and, and for the state, it actually keeps money in the Tennessee Valley. So when you think about oil and gas, it's used to supply and power cars in the Tennessee Valley. We don't make, any, we don't make or produce any, any oil or gas. We're not, an, we're not an oil or gas state. So it's either coming from other parts of the country or it's coming from abroad. Electricity is produced here. It's produced locally 
in whichever state you may be. So by using more of electricity, you're ke actually keeping and driving your local economy. Next, because we are the environmental, I am the, part of the environmental agency, I have to tout the clean air benefits of electric vehicles. So with the generation mix in Tennessee, as well as many other parts of the country, all parts of the country, in fact, the emissions profile and the pollution is significantly less over internal combustion vehicles, even hybrids. The fourth one is, you wouldn't think about it, but this actually, electric vehicles actually do contribute to money for our roads. And this is very important because if we're going to see the significant adoption that we believe is going to occur in the future, we can't leave our road system behind. And so in 2017, Tennessee's Improve Act instituted a $100 fee for electric vehicles, which would go towards Tennessee's roads. And lastly, we can't talk about automotive in the southeast without talking about jobs and economic development. So as we know, we have a large supply, large, large network of auto suppliers and manufacturers here that make components and electric vehicles themselves. Of course, Nissan down the road, and in a few years, Volkswagen. So there's a real, there's a real component of, of jobs. So the more electric vehicles that we can sell here, the more, drive, more jobs we can drive throughout the region. And so speaking of that, so if, if you saw Commissioner Rolf's presentation yesterday, you saw that Tennessee is the number one electric vehicle manufacturer in the southeast. And that we're actually the third largest manufacturer of EVs in the country, behind California and Michigan. And with Volkswagen coming online in 2022 and potentially some other, uh, hopefully some other additions, we may actually move up to the number two spot in the country, which would be a great, a great win for, for us and for the region. So we've got, to, we've got to talk about Volkswagen a little bit. I'm pretty excited about this, particularly because this, this won't be Volkswagen's first electric vehicle, but it will be the first electric vehicle produced in the United States. And because we can't talk about vehicles without talking about the move to SUVs and pickups, this will be the first true crossover for Volkswagen, and it will be produced right here in the southeast. So about an $800 million investment that they brought with that, 1,000 jobs, workforce training, and, of course, all the supplier networks that will, that will sprout up around that. So let's talk a little bit about the plan. So as I said earlier, the what is really we want to become a leader in electric vehicles across the southeast, and we want to have 200,000 electric vehicles on the road by 2028. And so some of the guiding principles around this, we, you know, we wanted to think deeply about you know, why we were doing this and how we were going about it. So we were really looking at four different factors in, in terms of economic development, the social benefits that go along with it, especially cost effectiveness, and technology innovation. And through these four guiding principles, we developed really a four-pillar system for this plan. And I'll outline those right now. So if you've thought about electric vehicles, you've probably thought about, where do I charge them? That's usually the first thing that comes up to people's, uh, on, on people's minds is charging infrastructure. So that was our first pillar, is to drive additional charging infrastructure across the state and work with our partners across the southeast to improve the charging infrastructure. And that includes both corridor highway charging, so hopefully in the, in the future we will see charging stations located at gas stations and convenience centers, as well as throughout the city. The next is just awareness. Just awareness and education that the electric vehicles exist and that they have more than a 90-mile range now. Uh, and th this, this goes along with some major events like National Drive Electric Week, which just wrapped up this last week. There were over, over 200 events across the United States last week, which were aimed at giving people opportunities to test drive and ride in electric vehicles. And we had four just here in the state of Tennessee. And the next is just continuing to make sure we have innovative and supportive policies throughout the state, not just at, at the state government level, but at the local level, looking at, at codes and standards and looking at supportive utility rates and electric rates. And then lastly, the fourth pillar is just making sure that avail, uh, electric vehicles are available in Tennessee, that they're on dealership lots, that they're in, in the regions where people want to buy them. This has been probably one of our biggest challenges so far 
in some parts of the state is just, there's no availability of electric vehicles, so people never even see them when they walk on, onto a dealership lot. So we suspect that will change, and we're going we're gonna to work with dealerships and automotive to, to change that. So among these four supporting pillars of our plan, we have these projects, and I'll let you take a second to read every single one of them. I'm just kidding. There's 48 of them. <laughs> Uh, so we're looking at these projects as specific incremental things and efforts that will get us toward that 200,000 electric vehicle goal. So we haven't been sitting on our laurels. We, we published this roadmap, as I said, in January, and we've got to, got to work almost immediately on a couple of new projects. And we're going to have, some, I think, some exciting announcements in the next month or so, uh, both for statewide initiatives as well as a regional uh, a regional initiative that you may hear about hopefully in the next month or so between other southeast states. But the first one I'm pretty excited about. Next week we'll be releasing the first version and first iteration of the state's statewide electric vehicle charging plan. And this will lay out essentially a roadmap for where charging infrastructure needs to go, how many chargers we need, what types of chargers we need, and where they, where they need to go. And as I said, we'll be releasing this uh, next week at the Sustainable Transportation Forum and Expo in Knoxville. And the next one is we've been continuing to do more ride and drive events. So we'll be releasing a ride and drive event guide, which is aimed at helping workplaces and utilities and local, um, local communities institute their own electric vehicle ride and drive events. And we're continuing to work on many, many others, but those are the two I wanted to highlight. This is a bit of, if you're into project or process management, you might appreciate this slide, but otherwise I'm going to kind of gloss over it. But what I want to, want to point out is that we do have a distinct process for each of the projects that we're, we're impl implementing to make sure that they get executed uh, and completed, delivered, and measured at the end. So let's look at some current statistics as we're tracking our progress. So as of March... Actually, in fact, this is slightly out of date now. We now have 7,200 electric vehicles in the state of Tennessee, up from 5,000, so about a 40, 45% increase over the last year and a half, which we're pretty excited about. Um, but clearly, to get to 200,000, we have a lot, lot further to go, much more work ahead of us. We also have up to, a, we have now 174 DC fast chargers, and these are considered the chargers that will give you 80% charge in 30, 20 to 30 minutes. So these are more designed for those corridors between, uh, between cities. And those are spread out across now 60 different sites across the state of Tennessee. We also have 943 level two charging plugs across over 400 sites. And these are just publicly available level two chargers and DC fast chargers. This does not include chargers that, at people's homes and chargers that are not publicly available. So some of our next steps that we're working on across Tennessee here. We are starting the process, we've started the process for actually funding the organization and funding the activities going forward. So we were very fortunate to get uh, TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, to step up and commit two years of funding. It says three years, but we have two years of initial funding from TVA to support these activities, primarily a full-time equivalent for a uh, coordinator position to help us drive forward in these, in these projects. She, she just came on board uh, last week. The next topic is around EV infrastructure, as I said. So our statewide charging plan will be released next week. And hot on the heels of that, we're starting to uh, put some initial funding out uh, and put some, put some planning out. So for the Volkswagen Environmental Mitigation Trust, if you're familiar with the settlement, we'll be putting about $6 million from that uh, towards electric vehicle charging infrastructure across the state. And so we'll be releasing a request for information October 1st uh, next week as well. And then we just see continued investment by utilities, by uh, automotive OEMs, by, by charging networks to continue to install chargers across the state and across the region. I know that's happening almost in every community. Uh, one of the interesting things is, is some of the, the small towns that you'll pull up to now, you'll notice you know, just the town square, all of a sudden, 
they, they're starting to have a le an electric vehicle charger in front of the county courthouse or the county seat now. So you're starting to see these, these electric vehicle charging networks pop up in pl unexpected places that we hadn't before, which is pretty exciting. And then lastly, we are continuing to drive awareness through ride and drive events, uh, allowing people basically to get in and have a, we call it a, a butt in seat experience, to actually get them to experience and feel the acceleration of an electric vehicle and the, the, con the instant torque and the lack of, of gear shifts. And that has always been, we've found, the best way to get people to buy an electric vehicle is to get them in the seat and behind the wheel of an electric vehicle. So with, it wouldn't be a good plan if we didn't have uh, tracking of metrics. So on an annual basis, we will be tracking and documenting our metrics in terms of electric vehicle adoption, number of chargers, number of ride and drive experiences. So we'll, we'll report these metrics on an annual basis. And then every two years, because we know this industry is changing a little bit right now, um, we wanted to make sure that we do a strategic refresh every two years for this plan. So, for example, we didn't really include the effect of autonomous vehicles in this plan in particular because there was so much uncertainty about the timing of when autonomy, and particularly level five, could truly make a, make a big impact. So that's something we're going to continue to evaluate every two years to look at autonomous driving, other and any, any other um, changes that may, they may come about. But we wanted to deal with, initially in this first, first draft of the, of the roadmap, things that we really knew over the next five to ten years we, we had very high certainty of. So just a little bit about our operational model going forward. Because we are a stakeholder-driven organization, it is primarily driven by activities of stakeholders and individual organiz individuals in, within organizations. But we will have, as I said, a coordinator position that will be focused on coordinating all these the 48 projects, the eye chart of projects that you saw. And so that administrator is actually sitting within an existing 501c3 called Tennessee Clean Fuels, and they have hired the coordinator. So as far as uh, uh, members, if there are others out there that would like to like to join, we we welcome you into the into the organization. A few things you can do: you can endorse the roadmap um, with a memorandum of understanding. Uh, you can support you know, your own specific activities at your workplace or within your business, and then provide funding. We're lo we're looking at funding as well to to complement what TVA has already provided. So other things you can do if you're interested, if you're based in Tennessee, uh, certainly help with a project, uh, endorse the roadmap, uh, try or buy an EV if, if you haven't. In fact, I'd like to take a quick poll of hands. How many of you out there have ridden in an electric vehicle or, or driven one? Okay, pretty good. Looks like we got, got a majority in the crowd. So that, that's one of the biggest things. If, if, if you yourself already haven't, or if you know of others who might be interested, get them, encourage them to go do a ride and drive, whether it's at their local dealership. Uh, Tesla's always pretty good about doing that as well. Um, consider installing EV chargers at your home or workplace. Uh, and then look at responding to the RFI. Now, for those of you, I know many of you are traveling here from out of state. Um, we're seeing this similar process that we've been undertaking here in Tennessee in other states. So, for example, Drive Electric Florida is something that we, we looked at closely before we began this process. North Carolina is undertaking a similar process, and there's been discussions in other states as well. So if, you don't, if you, your state doesn't already have something like this, consider talking, getting your, your other stakeholders and other folks in the industry together to look at doing something like this. There's a lot of value we found in just getting people together in the same room to talk about this, this initiative. And as, as a quick example, too, I want to touch on this because this was something, I, I came from the private sector, I came from Schneider Electric before. What, the power of having a, a, combining a couple of these things at, at once, uh, I want to talk about that. So. In 2013, Schneider Electric, their you know, electric, um, electric provider, electric uh, manufacturer, they installed electric vehicle charging stations at the three offices that we have around Nashville. We did a ride and drive experience with Nissan, and Nissan offered a $1,000 discount at that, at that event. Between that, 
those three things right there. Over the course of two weeks, we went from having no electric vehicles in any, any of the parking lots to over 24 new Nissan Leafs in the parking lot of, of Schneider Electric. It was a pretty impressive, uh, pretty impressive showing, and it, it underscored the power of providing the infrastructure, showing people it was there and it was reliable, and getting people into an electric vehicle. Uh, and it really changed the mentality and changed the, the course uh, for electric vehicles within, within the company. So I'll end where I began, back to the 1930s with the Tennessee Valley Authority's <laughs> advertisement of electrifying America and electrifying our future. Again, I want you, to, want you to think about and consider what's ahead. Obviously, we've heard a lot of different projections and, and prognostications about when electric vehicles will, will take hold, but we, we're seeing kind of a slow, steady growth in electric vehicles. And from our perspective, we want to do what we can at the state level to continue to promote that. We're never going to be able to change what's going on at the federal level and, and international trade or things like that. So we're really focused on what we can do here at the local level to drive adoption of electric vehicles. So with that, that's all I have. I will finish a few minutes early and we'll hand it off to our next pres presenters here.